And uh, let's do some uh, conclusions. Um, so just some opinions of about you know, the situation over the past 24 hours. I, uh, the, the, the vessel being sunk uh, continue to be you know, a big problem for the Russian uh, Navy. They still have not found a best way to deal with the drones, the surface drones, the suicide drones. And I think I'm, I wonder if it has something to do with pride. Because the if you look at World War One uh warships, World War One ships, those dreadnoughts and whatnot, they actually have cope cage. Just like the the Russian tank uh the, 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 the current modern tanks uh in the rough front line, they actually have this wiring uh, netting and uh, fencing or whatever to prevent uh, drone strikes during those days they actually have the the big version of it the same cage but to prevent torpedo strikes so so this kind of uh, technology actually existed before um and it's definitely you know usable and works it works so but no we haven't seen you no know, any cope cages on ships just yet in the modern age, uh, particularly over in the Black Sea. We we'll, we know I I feel that no the Russians should no invest about invest in it no or, or unless they are so confident about their machine gunners that you know they actually got a few ships sunk already. So no, they shouldn't be so you no know, confident about their machine gunners. And uh, but the, and basically you no know, one ship. How many machine guns do you have? Like two. No, so four if you're a very big ship and then the ukrainians send six drones at you at the same time and then it's, it's not like your your sh your machine gunners are going to be so accurate so no this is yeah the the the, the russians need to find a better solution to deal with it and uh the okay there is one report i actually missed is actually the destruction of the high mass and this time around this is the clearest image uh, ever uh, of a HIMARS undoubtedly getting destroyed by a Russian missile strike. So uh, this this I have already posted uh, the video over in the DPA Telegram channel. You can actually go and check it out, the video footage. Uh, or you can actually go to the DPA archive. I also posted this video. And, uh, and there is almost no doubt that this is actually a HIMARS because upon uh, getting hit, uh, some of these uh, missiles or rockets on the HIMARS actually went haywire, it, it actually flew out. So uh, this is the first ever you no know, firm confirmation of a Russian strike successfully hitting a HIMARS. Before that, there was just reports and really vague videos, you no know, super blurry videos that no one can really confirm. So this is the first of its kind. So this comes after you know, various confirmed uh, photos and videos of Abram tanks getting destroyed. So the 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 entire you no know, Western image of uh, equipment uh, that is superior, you know, almost invincible, you know, in in some people's mind is now gone. It's definitely not invisible. But credit is where credit is due. The HIMARS is really hard to hunt. Uh, the Russians really fight find it really hard to hunt down this high mass so i wonder if the ukrainians have the same problem with russian uh, missile launchers as well uh, the russians have a lot of missile launchers and they have been used quite a number of times and of course it, we also do rarely see a uh, russian uh, tornado get destroyed a russian smoke launcher get destroyed very rare as well so you no know, yeah so I, I it is a surprise to me like 20 30 years ago you know i was thinking about you no know, how can how how why would you know this vehicle still be you know relevant in, in the sense in my young mind i thought that technology is so advanced is like it's so easy to hunt right you know you have planes you fly and apparently you know i was so wrong uh, so that's a very interesting you know to thing to note that i believe that even in the nuclear war in world war three yeah, all these mobile launchers and uh, mobile um, missiles and everything seems to be you no know, the key, you no know, to victory or at least to you know continue to keep up, you know some kind of a attack on the on your enemy even in the doomsday scenario because it's so hard to hunt. So you know it's only through this Ukraine war you really see how difficult it is. So yeah, despite that they seem to be a rather large vehicle, and uh.
<clears throat> the situation at uh, Robotini uh, continues to be a mystery. Uh, but this Joe location really knows put the Ukrainian claims uh, into a lot of dubs. Uh, but of course, we do have the similar you no know, flip side over at the at the Afghan front where the Russian claims are all messed up. And um, so uh, I nothing I, I, I the over at Huyabili sector, I think the Melanifka situation is very interesting with both defense ministries uh, talk about it. I would de you know, definitely something to take a look at, uh, but I don't think this is something serious. It's just interesting that both defense ministry mentioned Melanifka and um, over at the Donetsk front, uh, this all these things I believe, uh, you no know, coming along the Voleda line, you know, just um, it's just going to be probing. I don't think the focus is there. I think the Russians are now focusing still along the Marinka sector. Definitely, they are trying to link up over here, link up over here, and um, probably uh, attack into the rear positions. So. Uh, the Russians attacking, pushing out of from Bobeda uh, seems to be the only way they can go. So I believe the Russians will also push in this direction to link up this area here. The Krasnohorivka situation continues to be you know, uh, very dubious uh, because only the Russians are talking about it. Ukrainians have not acknowledged it at all. It's really unusual. We will definitely have to wait and see you know, this Krasnohorivka. And uh, in terms of uh, Novomihalivka, yeah, like I mentioned in the sub rap, I believe the Russians are going to make this push into the rear position. And uh, I think this makes a lot of sense. And especially you push through, there's already a pawn over here. So this this is pawn around here. So there is not a lot of grounds uh, that the Russians need to capture in order to put the entire Novo Mihailivka into some kind of uh, operation and circumvent. So I think this makes sense. And uh, this geolocation does shows the possibility of that. Um, at the Africa front, um, so at the Africa front, as I mentioned during the sim wrap, <clears throat> stabilized line means they are not getting routed anymore. No, so don't, uh, so you know, don't cope so much. Like I said, it's really bad for health. The Ukrainians indeed is holding the lines, and Joe locations are showing that the Russians indeed did not capture all these uh, settlements. And uh, things are looking worse and worse, like you no, know, from for the Russians, uh, I mean for Ukrainians as well. But as in like the Russians are really losing this window of opportunity, and I think is effectively lost by now. Which means that everything from the battles from now on, uh, over at the uh, Badaichi, Semenivka, Olivka, Tonenke, is just gonna be a uh, a grind from now on, uh, because the window of you no. Know, uh, opportunity to really you know pounce on their success you know on this routed routed ukrainian forces to chase them down force them into very uncomfortable positions to push them uh, out of uh, possible better defensive positions is gone it's just entirely gone so instead what we do now have is the rush the ukrainians managed to actually re-establish this so-called first line or second line of defense after the fall of Adyavka city and I think the Ukrainians may actually succeed uh, in uh, able to hold this position but of course there is rumors uh, there is rumors or just people's opinion I guess that the Ukrainians are throwing whatever they have at this front line which is why there is this result but these are the best that there is left and if this is all destroyed, then they might have nothing be after that. But there is just rumors, uh, so no, don't bet on it. And uh, I think there's nothing else to talk about uh, because there's no really f change uh, in this area here. And um, yeah, the rest I think I more or less have covered in the sit wrap. So that's it. This is the conclusions. And uh, thank you for watching. Do press the like button, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next update.